guys, what's up? It's Melody and today we're going to talk about how to patch up holes. The subject I know very well because if you know anything about me and this channel, you know that I like to make everything float. And through trial and error, I have put a lot of holes in these walls. And I've learned if you're going for the floating method, to stick with Velcro first if you can because you're going to be patching up hundreds and hundreds of holes. I mean, I think I have at least patched up a hundred holes in this apartment alone. So I'm surprised these walls are still standing. But tip number one, use Velcro. This is definitely something worth knowing. So I want to cover all the bases on this channel so that we can do everything ourselves as much as we can. So we don't have to wait on anyone and we don't have to second guess ourselves. So we're going to get into that. And the first thing I like to start off with all home improvement projects is the items that you need. So the very first item that you're going to need is spackling and regular weight spackling will work great. The reason why I use lightweight spackling is because I'm literally having to do home improvement projects all the time. So the next thing that you want to get is a paintbrush because you're going to have to be painting your walls. So the very first thing I do when I move into an apartment is I grab my, my box cutter and I take a tiny little sliver of paint off of the corner somewhere that no one's going to look. Also make sure that the paint piece is substantial enough so that they can actually get a color read. So don't just bring a dot or a speck to the Lowe's Home Improvement Center. The next thing you want is a paintbrush and if you're wondering why this paintbrush looks clean, <laughs> It's because my last paintbrush got glued to the bottom of the toolbox because the glue got left open. Anyway, a paintbrush and then you're also going to need, hi Pat, and then you're also going to need some sandpaper, a little block of sandpaper, and also you're going to need a spackle knife. I'm sure there's another term for this that I just can't remember at the moment. And clean your tools, unlike me. I just spackled last night and... I should have cleaned my tools. I'm really ashamed, guys. I try to never use spackle tape as much as possible. Mirrors are hard to clean, so the less mirrors, the better. I like to just stick with spackling as much as possible. And if it falls through, then you know you need spackling tape. Spackling tape will give your spackle some foundation if your hole's too big so it doesn't fall straight through. You're also going to need your other tools to get things out of the wall, screws and other things. The very first thing you're going to need is the pliers. So when you put nails into the wall, you just grab your pliers and yank them out with a lot of force. <laughs> you're also going to need a screwdriver for some, in some cases. For anchors, you can just screw them out of the wall with your screwdriver. And then also, your mini cordless drill. You're going to need the screwdriver bit. Make sure all your tools are ready to go. You're going to need to load your screwdriver. If you don't know how to load a screwdriver, just check out my other two home improvement videos and I talk about that. So you want to load your screwdriver drill bit so that you can take out screws out of the wall. So if you have long screws and anchors, you're going to use this so that slowly and I have it on setting eight. You're going to use it slowly and you can probably even go slower than that, but you're going to use it slowly and you're going to take that screw out of the wall. We're going to go in and spackle away and I'm going to go in this with a vlog format once again. I just took out the screw with the screwdriver bit so I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm just going to unscrew the rest of this manually. So there we go. This one didn't have an anchor, this one did. So that's why the hole is bigger. I'm going to fill this, these holes with spackle. When you do your spackling, you want to make sure that it's a little bit of a mound so that you can sand it down once it dries. You don't want it to be an internal, an indent. Okay, I filled these holes and you can see they're kind of bumping out of the wall, which is exactly what I want. And I just had to use my finger to get that on the wall because it's not as malleable as regular spackle. So it's kind of dry. So I wouldn't recommend it. It definitely is a lot lighter though. So I can see the appeal. That's what it's called. It's a putty knife. I, uh, always comes to me after the fact. I'm not going to redo that intro guys. I'm just going to leave whatever I said it was called. When you use your putty knife, you will find it is a lot easier with regular spackle. So those holes are ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and take out the nail in the wall. So this isn't a screw or an anchor. This is just a nail. So I'm just going to use my pliers to yank that out of the wall. We're in the Sam Hill is my pliers. When I travel, 
everything's out of place. So I'm always losing stuff when I travel. I mean, I don't literally lose it. I eventually find it. But I am always losing stuff in the hotel room <laughs> because it's not in its normal place. Well, that's what's happening here. Okay, I'm gonna try to take this off without uh, turning off the camera, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. I'm pretty puny. Now I'm gonna need to turn off the camera. Okay guys, I have these massive holes in the wall and I already patched up two of them. You can see the one that I did with the tape and it is a lot more obvious. That's why I say just to avoid using it unless you absolutely, it's just not going to work. So any of these anchor holes right here, I'm going to be able to fill with just spackle. And how I'm going to get these anchors out is I'm going to use my screwdriver. Just regular screwdriver, not the cordless drill. And I'm just going to twist and they'll come straight out of the wall like so. There you go. So these are bigger holes but they can still just be filled with spackle. You never want to use the tape unless you absolutely have to. These holes were because I was hiding my TV cord. So when I had my TV in here I had the cord running down and I had a little cord cover for that. So that's what these holes are from. And also I had my DVD player and other things on the shelf. The key here is just to know what you want out of life. That's the moral of the story. Because this is just a lot more work than it has to be. I think I'm still going to put a TV in the bedroom because I do stay in bed a lot. I'm just going to put it on my desk. I have always wanted to get one of those little fireplaces. So if you have one of those, let me know because I want to know how you like it. I was thinking about getting one for my wall right underneath my TV. Eventually I'll get a bigger TV for the bedroom. You know, some people say don't put TVs in your bedroom, but it all depends on your lifestyle. Don't listen to anybody's hard and fast rules. <laughs> Do what works for you. But I kind of wanted to put a fireplace underneath it and then the TV on the top for the bedroom. But I don't know if it gets cold enough in Tennessee for that. But anyways, let me know if you guys have one in your bedroom or living room. As you can see, I've already filled these and I've already sanded them down. That one might need a little bit more sanding. I've sanded these down, so they just need some paint. Make sure you don't vacuum before you start because you can have a lot of vacuuming afterwards. Okay, now that my paint is stirred, and make sure you wash off your stick if you're going to use the stick from outside so that you don't get any bark in there. Now that my paint is stirred, I'm going to go ahead and glob it onto the hole right in the center and then feather it out with my paintbrush. So it's a good thing I have this drop cloth because I did get some paint there. And I don't want to have bald spots in the carpet <laughs> from cutting out. Hello there, Pat. Pat? going on with you? No, you can't have some paint. Make sure that you wet your brush, kind of like when you do makeup and you're using a sponge. Make sure your brush is only a little bit damp. You don't want it to be soaking. And then we're going to dip it into this paint. Once you're done, you want to hammer the lid shut so that the paint doesn't dry out. You want to press down in the center and use a lot of force when you're using the hammer. Once you fill up your holes, the idea is to just get as little paint on the wall as possible. The more paint you put on the wall, the more obvious it's going to be. So as little paint as possible while still covering up the hole. And once you're done, you also have to rinse out your paintbrush thoroughly so that there's no paint left in there. So you put it under warm water and you clean it until it runs completely clear. When you are closing that lid, with your hammer be very careful because paint will get everywhere because uh, paint will be bouncing out of it these holes are filled and they are going to dry very nicely i can already tell so we just need to work on these holes last i hope that this video helps you out because it seems like a lot of steps and a lot of tools and it actually is a lot of tools to get just these holes covered therefore you want to use velcro as much as you can in command strips Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope you have a hole in your house right now that you can give these tips a try on. Just knock it out of the way. It's like riding a bike. Once you learn how to do it, you never forget how. So give it a try. There's nothing like seeing your own handiwork when everything blends into the wall just perfectly. So I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next Minimalist and Organization video.